Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz EV, fully electric. The vehicle all electric, the feeling all Mercedes. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQS. Our next guest, the former Syracuse head coach who is leading the Celebrity Bracket Challenge. And uh, Jim Beheim has Purdue and UConn in the finals with Purdue winning it all. His final four, he had NC State going to the final four. Man, I'm gaining so much more respect for you in retirement. Congratulations, Coach. You're, you're leading the Celebrity Bracket Challenge. I don't know if I should be in the celebrity bracket. I should be in the expert category, shouldn't I? Uh, really? Emeritus. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and also Michael Jordan. Okay, let's not argue about that. <laughs> okay. <He's> the best. <laughs> let, me, let me bring this up because you faced him, what, 1983 yes. when he was at North Carolina? Yeah. Okay. What do you remember about Jordan in 83? Well, we held him to 12 points. They beat us by 30, but we, we, we all, <laughs> great job. I think, I think Brad Doherty had 25 and Sam Perkins 20, you know, Kenny Smith 15, but you know, they were so good. They had so many weapons that he didn't, you know, some games he just got 12, but uh, he, uh, yeah, he's the best I've ever seen. I saw him when he was in high school, saw his progress and you know what he did. He, I mean, everybody, I love, I think LeBron's moved all the way up to second in my mind, but Michael Jordan uh, was clearly the best player I've ever seen. I mean, he just was right on both ends and, you know, he just didn't want, he was not going to lose. He's, Kobe was a lot like Michael in that way. He just, he was kind of a mini Michael Jordan. He just uh, not quite there. And interestingly, I saw a kid a couple of years ago, probably four now, that I said, that guy's like Michael Jordan. And I saw him in the summer when he was a junior in high school. His name's Anthony Edwards. Yeah. And now he's almost coming into that category. Not yet, of course, but he's the only guy I've seen that since Michael Jordan, who I thought is kind of like Michael Jordan. But the reason I'm one the I'm winning all my pools. I won a couple other ones too, is I picked the ACC, which was the best conference in the country. Again, in spite of the, the, the numbers that people go by that get six mountain West teams in the tournament and nine or whatever teams from the big 12, because they know how to schedule and they get their net built up. Then why, don't you, why aren't you on the committee? Because I'm a coach and they think they're much smarter than I am. <laughs> so, you know, it's it, you just they need somebody to help them because the other thing they eliminated and was the last 10 games, which I agreed with a little bit. You don't want to go just by the last 10, but you certainly want to count the last 10 more than the first 10, which are usually easy non conference games. And if you looked at Pittsburgh, Seton Hall, Indiana State, and St. John's. At the end of the year, they were just playing way better. It wasn't even close. Yeah. And the fact that they're in the finals of the NIT, I'm not even going by that. But they were teams should have been in now. Here's the real interesting thing. Five bid stealers came up this year. So those four or five teams got pushed out, which means they were really good enough to get in the tournament, right, into the bid stealers. So that's why I advocate for an expansion of eight teams. Just go to another site like Dayton, play that. 15 against 10, whatever you want to, however you want to do it and get those eight teams who there's going to be some that were really legitimately would have been in the tournament, except for the bid stealers. And then you add a couple more and you, yeah. Are you going to have somebody not in there, but you don't dilute the tournament. You don't cheapen the tournament. I remember when it was at 24 coach Wooden said no expansion. This is perfect. You know, and he was pretty smart, but, Obviously, we went to 48. Tournament was great. We went to 64. Great. 68. Great. Tournament's great. Everything is screwed up in college basketball right now. Everything. Except for the turn the games on the court. They're good. Somehow miracle, they're still good. The fact that we're in the offseason and starters are transferring. Yeah. Five starters from one school transfer. And they were they, they had a good coach. They had, what are they doing that for? Money. They're going for money, which all right, that's good. You want that? You're an advocate of that. 
players should get three, four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, I'm okay with that, but it's every year you reshape your roster. I've had 10, 15 fans tell me, we don't even know who's going to be here. How can we? Well, I said, you just got to wait till next year, follow the team. If they're good, you'll go. You know, that's the way fans are. If they're not good, they won't go. But if they're good, they'll go. But you, it's just, it's just the way it is. And I don't see anything that can possibly change that. There's NILs here. Even if you had employees, even whatever, you're still going to have NIL because you got to get the players to your school. Uh, put your coaching hat on. How do you, yes. where, where is UConn vulnerable? I, they're really, I don't, I've said this from the beginning. They're not quite as good as they were last year, but they're still the best team. So maybe they're a little bit, I think Purdue's better by far than they were last year. I think, I think Alabama is good. I think that NC State is a threat to anybody. I picked them to go to the Final Four I because I watched them play in the ACC tournament. And it was obvious to me this is – this is now they're also beating Marquette by a number, Duke by a number now. They're not squeezing by. They're beating them convincingly. I mean, I still like Purdue over them, but I would not be surprised if – NC State won. Just remember, nine games ago, they were going to fire the coach at North Carolina State. And it's a magical turnaround. A lot because of Michael O'Connell going into the starting lineup, changed their whole dynamic, the way they play. And, of course, uh, Burns is a star. He's a unique player. Could he play in the NBA, today's NBA? It'd be hard. He has to get a rest every three or four minutes. I I mean, if he wants to. And he want, he, I mean, they say 280. Yeah, he's got to put the other foot on the scale first before he gets to his weight. I, I think he's <laughs> probably 340. He'd have to lose 50, 60 pounds. And then, yeah, he's he's like Zach Randolph a lot. Yeah, He's a very similar player, but he's got to dedicate himself to, to getting his body ready for the NBA. It's a f- much faster pace game. How many, but I like how many times did you face a team? And you said, we don't have a chance. Well, I said that a few times, but we ended up winning some of them. (laughs) When when Patrick Ewing was there, you know, Michael Graham, those guys, we we beat them. uh, You know, we beat them a couple times when Patrick was there, a few. But he was a hard guy, you know, when you went against him. But other than that, I always thought there's always a chance. You always feel you have a chance. And even with Patrick, as much as I doubted it, we, we, we beat him a few times. It's not easy. But um, coaches and players always think there's a way. And that's all NC State's done. They believe they had to go through a good – Syracuse had beat them twice. They had to go through them. They had to go through Duke and, and they had to go through Carolina. You know what's funny? I watched all five games. They had more trouble with Louisville. That's how – you know, everybody said our league was bad. Louisville almost beat NC State in the tournament, the first game, they had a really good chance to beat them. And, you know, you, you look at the leagues and it, it's just criminal that we're going by the net rating. It's just vote. It's just bogus. It's just completely bogus and good teams are getting left out. I have no doubt Seton Hall or St. John's could have run, won two or three games in this tournament True. just from True. watching them play. Yeah. So, In the old days, you left out a team. The team wasn't going to win anyway. Now, college basketball is really good, and you're leaving teams out that could win games. And I think that's a big mistake. So it's correctable. It's too. It's you just play another Dayton. It's all it is. I heard one committee member told me, "Well, we won't get any more money for that. So what? You're getting a billion dollars. You know, if you play." like that in another city you'll make money on that not a lot but you'll sell out if it's a good you know good for there'll be a good eight teams there because you'll have 15 and 10 talking to uh, jim Beheim. he's leading the celebrity bracket challenge he's got uh purdue against connecticut for the title D- uh, would you allow caitlin clark if you were her coach to shoot the way she shoots and further and further back if she wants <laughs> There's no bad shot then for her. He's like Steph Curry. You think Steve Kerr ever tells Steph Curry, hey, Steph, don't take that shot? 
No. I think I think maybe ten years ago he did. No, I doubt it. I think Steph Curry's been on a roll for at least seven or eight years. No, but I no. think initially he was like those seem like crazy shots. He's the only one that I've seen other than Steph Curry that can do that. She's incredible. She's the best player to watch. I've said this all year. She's the best player to watch play basketball, playing basketball, other than Steph Curry, in my mind. I mean, I, I drove to Albany to see her. I've never done that. You know, the last time I drove someplace to see a player was Pete Maravich in the NIT. <laughs> that was when I was 21. That was 50 years ago. So she's that good. Um, I You know, she's just an amazing passer. Yeah. Probably one of the most creative passers. I've ever seen along with the magic Johnson, that type of passer. She makes long, short pass, bounce pass. I mean, incredible passes and her teammates have been really good. They catch them and they finish. I mean, they've done a really good job with her. I mean, I, I think LSU is 20 points better than Iowa, but she just, she wasn't going to let that happen. There's a reason 12 million people are watching ESPN yeah. for a game. If that game was on CBS, they probably would have had 25, 30 million people watching that game. And I can't give you much credit. You're driving no. from Syracuse to Albany. I mean, yeah, that's, 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 that's not like cross country. No, coach. I mean, no, it's too come on. You're better than that. But it's, it's, I, I used it as an example that I've never okay. gone to see anybody except Pete, Pete Maravich. Maravich. Okay, so, I want to leave you with this. I've been trying to get <laughs> Christian Leitner in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Why is Leitner not in the Basketball Hall of Fame? Because he did nothing, not really much in the NBA. Yeah, but he's That's, one of the 10 greatest yeah. college players of all time. Yeah. And there's some great college coaches yes. that are not in the Hall of Fame. It's more slated to the professional NBA. It is. I mean, that's okay. But, yeah, you have a good point. There's some great high school coaches that are not in. Um, they've made it a little bit more inclusive, but it's still, I, I, I agree, there's some college players. Christian Leitner's one that you could really deem worthy of being in the Hall of Fame. By the way, am I way ahead in the brackets? Because yeah. I never. Yeah, I think oh. you're dumb. Did you offer Leitner a scholarship at Syracuse? I did. He came to see us play Georgetown. We had 35,000 people there. <laughs> we won the game. He was at the game. His quote, which I never heard at the time, this is crazy. I can't come here. Why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure there's other reasons he went to Duke, but that's what he did say on his visit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's a great player. Well, and, they probably uh, offered him more money than Syracuse no, did. And that's no, probably, I don't think. You don't I think so? <laughs> I, don't, I, think they, I think Bobby Hurley said, no, I'll pass you the ball all the time. If you go to Syracuse, <laughs> that, that guard there won't pass you the ball. <laughs> Sherman Douglas won't pass you the ball. <laughs> no, Sherm's going to be shooting. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, well, congrats on the brackets there. And uh, good luck. It's uh, Purdue beating UConn in the national title game. Thank you, Coach. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. And that's Jim Behan, former Syracuse head coach. 47 years there.